Hey guys, uh, I wanted to put together a quick video to kind of go through the uh, procedure for finding the main idea and supporting details. I know this is something that a couple of you have um, said that you're still struggling with, so I thought it might be helpful for you to have um, an example of me going through an article, kind of talking through it out loud so that you can um, refer back to this if you need more help, or even just to refresh your memory. It'll be a while after um, Thanksgiving break until you guys get back to do your test on Monday, so this could be a good way for you to review. So, uh, the article that I have here is called after a concussion, when can teams return to the football field? And I'm just gonna do the same thing that you should do as you're uh, attacking a new informational text, and I'm gonna read through it once just to get the gist. So after a concussion, when can teams return to the football field? On a cool October morning, still nearly an hour before sunrise, Michael Shaw emerges from his bedroom. He pulls a Lee Summit North High School shirt over his head and joins his family in the kitchen for a morning prayer. We pray that you keep him safe in the football game tonight and let the angels watch over him, his mother, Rihanna, says as she does each week on Michael's game days. A year ago, Michael suffered a concussion in the game that rendered him temporarily unable to walk or speak. Memory loss followed, forcing him to drop two high school classes while extreme sensitivity to light and sound prevented him from attending his team's games, even as a spectator. This season, though, he's back on the field, a senior for the Broncos watching concussions closely. Nearly 1,500 high school football players in Missouri suffered concussions in 2012, and most of them returned to action within two weeks, according to Missouri high school officials. The attention given to concussions has never been more intense, prompting coaches, parents, schools, lawmakers, everyone, to be hypersensitive to head injuries and their symptoms. But it's what happens afterwards that is less precise, because it's not clear when a high school player is ready to return to the football field after suffering a head injury. I think we all worried about sending a kid back out there too soon. Any doctor who says otherwise is lying, says Greg Canty, director of the Center for Sports Medicine at Children's Mercy Hospital in Kansas City. You like to practice medicine based on evidence that's supported with medical studies. We don't have that here, he said. Second Impact Syndrome there were 17 deaths across all levels of football in 2013, according to figures gathered annually by the National Center for Catastrophic Sports Injury Research. All 17 were high school athletes. Doctors said that they are more, even more concerned with second impact syndrome, an often fatal condition that occurs when a player suffers a second concussion before the first is even healed. Once you have the symptoms, the brain is more fragile, Canty said. A second hit could result in potentially catastrophic injury, he said. Adolescents face the most danger of second impact syndrome because their brains are still maturing, says Brett Osborne, a neurosurgeon who has studied concussions in sports. High school athletes suffer concussions at nearly twice the rate of college players, the Institute of Medicine and National Research Council determined last October, but the treatment they receive is inconsistent. When to return? Brian Mahaffey, who wrote an article about concussions in the journal Missouri Medicine last year, advises that high school athletes should be symptom-free for seven days before returning to the practice field. An athlete of middle school age should wait 10 days after all symptoms have subsided, he said. Osborne, on the other hand, recommends that a child sit out at least six weeks after suffering a concussion, even if it's mild. State law isn't so cautious. Missouri says a player must be removed from competition for only 24 hours before evaluation, while Kansas has no such timetable. A player who has suffered a concussion immediately becomes more likely to suffer another one. As a result, Mahaffey suggests to some patients they quit football, though determining that proper stopping point is often guesswork. A mom forbids football. Barb Kuntz's son, Alex, took a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit during an Olathe South practice in 2013, he was knocked backward but never lost consciousness. A day later, Alex was having trouble comprehending basic ideas in math class. He remembers walking to the cafeteria for lunch, feeling confused. As he sat down for lunch, he shook his two milk cartons, as he did every day, but this time he had opened the cartons before shaking them. Milk sprayed everywhere. It took me a good half second before I realized I was showering myself with milk, he said. I was soaked. Alex left school 20 minutes later to see a doctor, who diagnosed him with a concussion. His mother forbade him from ever taking the field again. His brother Andy was also pulled from the Lathy South team. Taking computerized assessments. On the first play of his 2014 season, 
Liberty High School junior Josh Watson sniffed out a Lee's Summit West running play. He sprinted toward the line of scrimmage, where he met tailback Ryan Williams. Bang. The ensuing hit was jarring enough to send Watson to the turf, where he remained before needing a trainer's assistance to walk to the sideline. Watson begs the team's trainers to return to the game, but they thought he displayed symptoms of a concussion. That spelled the end of his playing time in the season opener. That decision is out of my hands. It's not me making the call, Liberty coach Chad Friggin said. And that's a good thing. As a coach, I want to win and put him back in the game. The process of rejoining the team, which Watson did the following Wednesday after it was determined he did not have a concussion, has new guidelines. Several area high schools in Missouri and Kansas, as well as a handful of middle schools, have added a new program. Players take a computerized assessment before the season, which gives them a baseline score. If a player is later thought to have had some sort of head injury, he takes the test again and the scores are compared. Computerized tests can often offer a false confidence, Canty said. A player passes the test and he's often determined to be fine. Many times we need more and better evidence to support that determination. So let's take a look and determine the main idea of this article. Um, now, this is a good example of an article uh, for informational text because it really does do um, almost exactly what it says it's going to do in this informational text structure. Um, so we'll take a look at that. Um, however, when we're looking for the main idea, the very first thing that we want to do is to take a look at that title. Um, the title here is a question. We know that if we're reading an informational article that starts with a question that the purpose of that article is going to be um, to try to answer that question. Um, so it says, after a concussion, when can teens return to the football field? And hopefully we'll get an answer to that question or at least um, a sort of main idea about that, why that question couldn't be answered. Now, if you feel like you're making mistakes with main idea, I think that a lot of it um, is confusion between topic and main idea. Um, so some of you, perhaps, when reading this, you would say that the main idea would be concussions or student athletes getting concussions. However, that would be the topic. Uh, it's important to remember that the main idea is the topic, but also what the author wants to say about it. Um, so we'll come back to that as we get through the article. So we've got the title. We know that this is going to be about concussions, but also about timing. When can um, kids come back to the football field after receiving a concussion? So let's take a look here. So introduction often starts with an anecdote or something the readers can visualize. And do we have that here? Certainly. Uh, they put you, the reader, in the shoes of Michael Shaw. Um, they go through a morning in his household to sort of give it that human element um, where they talk a little bit about um, what's going on so that the readers can visualize it. Do we quite get the main idea yet? No, not quite. Not in this first little part. Um, they just want to set the scene to let us know that we're talking about concussions and why this is important. Next up, we're going to look for that brief history or background to give the reader context. And we've got a lot of that. Um, they talk about Michael here for a personal anecdote. But down here, watching concussions closely, it says nearly 1,500 high school football players in Missouri suffered concussions in 2012. Um, the attention given to concussions has never been more intense, um, prompting everyone uh, to be hypersensitive to head injuries and their symptoms. Maybe you've heard about this on the news or on the radio or something, that this is a really big deal. Um, it wasn't such a big deal when I was in school. I don't remember hearing about this idea of concussion so much, but it's definitely something that with student athletes and even in the NFL, they uh, have been really hyper-focused on it. So let's take a look at that heading there, watching concussions closely. And this is a pretty good summary of, of the brief history or background. So I'm going to go over to this blank informational text. And what I'm going to do is paste that in there. So um, it had nearly 1,500 high school football players in Missouri suffered concussions. The attention given to concussions has made everybody be hypersensitive. So this gives us that background. Um, we know that concussions are something that are really under a microscope right now, so that helps to build the context to help us read this article. So I'm going to leave this main idea uh, blank. Like it says here, sometimes you may not be clear until you've read the entire article, and I think that this is one of those articles. Some of the articles that you'll read, the main idea will be listed as a sentence at the end of the introduction, but that's not the case here. So let's go through and find some supporting ideas. Again, it says to look for section titles. They clue the reader in. Um, so let's see this one. So watching concussions closely. Um, 
what else do we have? Often includes quotes from experts as evidence, and I think that that's the case here. So we've got Greg Canty, who is the director of the Center for Sports Medicine, and he says, I think we all worry about sending a kid back out there too soon. Any doctor who says otherwise is lying. Uh, you like to practice medicine based on evidence that's supported with medical studies, and we don't have that here. So that's a really good piece of supporting evidence now. It's from an article, uh, or I'm sorry, from an expert, and it does start to answer this question asked in the title, when can teens return to the football field? So let's go back over to our informational text organizer, and we're going to put in the supporting, um, whoops, there we go, that doctors worry about sending kids back to a game after a concussion because there have not been enough studies and there's not enough scientific evidence to inform their practices. So I feel like that's a pretty good summary of what um, this Dr. Canty has said there. So we'll keep moving on. Again, we're going to look for section titles to clue the reader in. And here we have second impact syndrome. So we know this is going to be something about second impact syndrome. We can infer that it probably has to do with getting a second concussion. Um, a little bit more background here. There were 17 deaths across all levels. They were all high school athletes. And then here, doctors said they're even more concerned with second impact syndrome, an often fatal condition that occurs when a player suffers a second concussion before the first is healed. Um, so we've got a lot of great information there. Another expert from another expert quote from Canty, a second hit could result in a potentially catastrophic injury. Um, so that helps answer this question, why is it a concern when kids can return to the football field? Well, it's because second impact syndrome is fatal and it happens when a player gets a second concussion before the first is healed. So it's really important um, that we're spending enough time with kids to make sure um, that they're ready to go back to the game. So we'll continue reading on. We've got when to return here. Um, so we know that this is going to even more zoom in on this idea of when teens can return. It's got the same um, words of the title. So we've got a new guy here, Brian Mahaffey. He wrote an article about concussions in the journal Missouri Medicine, and he advised that high school students should be symptom-free for seven days. Middle school should wait 10 days. However, a different person recommends that a child sit out for at least six weeks, even if it's mild. State law isn't as cautious. Missouri says a player must be removed from competition for only 24 hours, and Kansas uh, has no such timetable. And that really kind of goes to, to show one thing, and I'm going to summarize here, that schools, doctors, and state laws have inconsistent practices uh, to determine when a student athlete is ready to return to a game. Um, so all of that goes to say when to return. Well, we don't really know because everybody does it a little bit differently. Um, so we'll go on again. This um, is kind of a weird little detour. It gives a little bit more background information, uh, another personal anecdote to make it a little bit more relevant. They gave us a lot of facts, and now I think the author just wanted to take a step back, give us another anecdote to sort of make it real. Um, so that really doesn't go to support the details. We just know, again, that um, concussions... Um, I guess aren't always diagnosed. It's something that you can miss. Um, so there's a little anecdote there. And we move on taking computerized assessments. Um, so this heading hints us in that it's going to be about taking a test on a computer. And it goes through and it talks about how um, the player made a really great play. He begged his trainers to return to the game, um, but they thought he displayed symptoms of a concussion. And how the coach said a really good point here that as a coach, he wants to win. Um, so he may not always make the best decision for the kid. Um, he may be making the better decision for himself as a coach or for the team. And then we've got here that several high schools in Missouri and Kansas, as well as a handful of middle schools, have added a new program where players take a computerized assessment before the season to give them a baseline score. Um, so it's sort of like a app. I don't know exactly what it is, but it probably has some various logic questions, math, maybe shapes and stuff like that. Um, so you get a score on how well that student performed. And then after a big hit, they would go back and they would take the test again. Um, However, it says that uh, Canty, the doctor, again says computerized tests can offer a false confidence. A player passes the test and he's often determined to be fine, but many times we need more and better evidence to support that determination. So it sounds like this doctor isn't really convinced that these tests are the best way to judge whether or not a student has um, re recovered from a concussion. So let's put that in. That's another important supporting detail. Um, computerized tests are now available that may help measure if a student suffered a concussion, but doctors say that alone isn't enough evidence to determine if an athlete is ready to return to the field. 
So we've got a pretty good, um, pretty good map here. We still don't quite have our main idea, but we've got all these supporting details, and these are all building up to answer the question here. So um, once again, the question after a concussion, when can teams return to the football field? And our main idea um, certainly needs to be uh, an answer to that question. Now here's where um, there's probably going to be some differences between what um, different people would would word it. Um, however, I certainly, um, if you were to say students are getting concussions um, or students are um, more likely to get concussions than adult, that would certainly be a developing, um, even if you were to have the supporting details proper. Um, I do think that there are a couple important parts here. So the best main idea that I can think of would start out, although... There is a lot of focus on concussions in high school athletes. There is a lack of scientific evidence, because that's something that came up a lot. Um, doctors worry about it. There's not enough scientific evidence. Um, they have inconsistent practices. The um, tests, um, the tests don't really do much, according to some doctors. So. Although there is a lot of focus on concussions in high school athletes, there is a lack of scientific evidence available to help determine the best time for students who have suffered, not received, suffered from a concussion. So although there is a lot of focus on concussions in high school athletes, there's a lack of scientific evidence available to help determine the best time for students who have suffered from a concussion to return to a game. It's very wordy. Um, I'm not going to be grading your grammar, sentence structure, or anything like that. This is just to see how well can you pull that out. Um, and according to what we've got here, this would be a proficient main idea. So although there's a lot of focus on concussions in high school athletes, there's a lack of scientific evidence available to help determine the best time for students who have suffered from a concussion to return to a game. That covers everything here. Uh, um, so we can check our answer really easily by looking at the title. Does that answer that question? Yeah, the, the answer is that there really isn't an answer right now. Um, so I hope that this helped. I do have the informational text graphic organizer on my website. And also, if you check the description, I've got a link to another article that you could go through and try this on your own for some additional practice. And I do have a link to answer keys there as well so that you can check your answer. So again, I hope this helps. As always, if you have any questions, you can comment below or email me. Thanks.